everybody, Devin Olson here. Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video. A lot of you have been asking for me to do a video about my pack and what's in it, so we're gonna cover that today. Also, I'm just gonna cover what I'm wearing, because I don't know how many times a week I've been getting asked about what I'm wearing when I'm wet waiting, but it's a lot. So we're gonna cover that as well, to try and make it easy for you. Let's talk about the wet waiting first. What I'm wearing is pretty simple. I just have a pair of men's leggings. If you do a quick Google search, you'll come up with an innumerable amount of possibilities. Um, these, I think, are made by Dr. Skins, but that doesn't really matter. Um, they're just men's leggings, and I've also worn Under Armour versions. They're all great. Um, and then I have them under a set of quick dry shorts, so just some fishing shorts that dry quickly. And the main reason why I wear leggings is that they don't catch as much water when I'm waiting around. So if I wore a full leg pant that are they tend to be pretty baggy and the, the shin and calf area of the pants will catch a lot of water and it makes it just harder to wade. So with these leggings, they keep the sun off me, uh, sometimes we'll keep the bugs off, but, um, and then uh, protect my shins from brush and things like that so I don't get beat up. But they're nice and cool when they're wet and they're evaporating that uh, water off of them and then they also allow me to wade for, uh, easier through the water. And then I just have typical wet wading socks that go under my boots and that's it. That's my wet wading garb. So if you're uh, in a place where you still have some wet wading season left, uh, maybe you can try that and you'll find yourself having uh, more comfort on the water. All right, let's move on to my packs. So I have a two pack system and I get asked a lot why. Um, the reality is twofold. Number one, I have an old injury in my left shoulder where I have a permanent knot there. And if I put much weight on that shoulder, Within 20 minutes, I basically can't fish anymore because I'm in a lot of pain. So I always I have to come up with a system that makes it so I can carry all the things that I want, but also keep weight off that shoulder. And I don't know how many packs I've been through during, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, but it's been a lot. Um, and I've finally settled on the system I have right now, and it's working well. So um, if you are the type of person who carries a lot of boxes and a lot of stuff to the river, like me, then this might be a good way for you. Um, so pay attention. So my two packs are an Umpqua Ledges 650 hip pack or lumbar pack. Um, this pack is great. It's got uh, an attached water bottle holder. If you have a water bottle, I've added a carabiner with a rope onto it that I can snap onto a water bottle if I have it. Um, so when I carry a water bottle, I have that. I'll show you something else that I have in my pack right now for, for today when I get there. Um, it's got these two external pockets. Those are the ones that I keep bug spray and sunscreen in. Tiny little pockets. Um, and then on, in the main compartment there, that's where I just keep a whole bunch of fly boxes. To try and keep weight off of my shoulders, I put a lot of the boxes in here, the ones that I don't need as much for the day. Um, so it looks like I've got six boxes in here. Um, these are kind of just flies that I don't expect to fish as much. So among these I have Today I have kind of a junk box. It's got mops on one side, eggs on the other. And I have a big dry fly box. It's got really big kind of uh, large dry dropper flies. So, you know, hoppers, uh, stimulators with a whole bunch of yarn, big terrestrial type stuff, even a few green drake things, um, mainly just larger dry flies that are really buoyant that can hold up a lot of weight if I need them. Then I have a smaller dry fly box with caddis and uh, beetles and ants on one side. And then on the other side, it's mainly mayflies and or midges. Uh, lots of, uh, these are some of the hackled ones and, and older versions in here with a few shuttlecocks, things like that. And then I, since I've been tying so many more of these over the last year, I started another dry fly box, which is a little bare right now, but um, this is just CDC winged flies in this box. And then the last two boxes I have in here, I have one that's just caddis larva and a few pupa. Oops. And then another that has stone flies on one side and then kind of a few experimental or older patterns on another side um, that I occasionally dip into, but these don't get fished much, so they aren't in my main nymph box that I dive into a lot. Okay, so that's what's in my hip pack. 
in my chest pack. This is the Umqua Overlook. Um, and the cool part about having that hip pack is that the backpack part of this rests on the hip pack. So it takes a lot of the weight off my shoulders. If I just wore the chest pack alone, because of the injury I've got, I wouldn't be able to do it. I've worn just chest packs before and they hurt. <laughs> but having that uh, hip pack on there really helps uh, take some of the weight off. So in the, in the back, um, I have a box of streamers, just kind of small to medium sized jig streamers that I do my Euro nymphing or Euro streamering with. Um, it's got a cool little tab here, the Velcros, that's where I put my keys. I also have the drone in here today, which I don't normally have if we're not filming. Um, one of the, my favorite additions this year is I picked up one of these Katahdin B Freeze. Um, this is just a, a silicone water bottle filter. And on days where it's a river that I trust, don't feel gross about filtering water, then instead of bringing a, a water bottle, I just tote this along. Um, this is kind of my new favorite filter I just spent a week and a half backpacking with and it works great. Um, and I have a sandwich, lens cloth, a few other bars, and then um, that, you know, just to eat. And then I also have a couple hand warmers just in case I get a surprise cold day. And I'll keep some extra kind of back stock tippet in here in case I run out. I'll put it in the back there um, just to be safe. And then most of the time that's where I put my camera as well. Um, that's why I, I like having that larger backpack that this chest pack has because I can store a few more things back there that uh, I wouldn't if the chest pack only had a front portion. And there again, it helps keep that weight off. All right, on the front, I have a fly drying patch up here. This is one of those CNF design ones that we have in the shop. We also have a, just a shop version of it. Um, it. Not only is it a drying patch, but it's kind of a working box where any flies that I expect to fish for the day can just kind of go in there and then it's a really easy thing to grab. Nippers on one side. I'm gonna reconfigure this here in a bit with uh, zingers to have my nippers and hemostats up there because I don't have it the way I want right now. Um, I have another box here, just a smaller Orient Sun box. This doesn't have much in it right now because this is mainly just an experimental box that I keep up front. So if I'm tying new flies that are experiments, um, this nice light box, I'll just chuck it in there and I can put flies in and out of there as well as a working box. But all my uh, tying the last couple of nights has been mostly just filling holes. So I haven't done any experiments lately, which is why that box doesn't have much in it. I also have a digital kitchen thermometer. This is what I'm using as my thermometer right now. Um, it's an easy read and it's more accurate. I, I was using an infrared model that I got asked about a lot. Well, I did some comparisons and validation with some uh, thermometers and guess what? That one was reading very inaccurately. So I have now ditched it. <laughs> All right, then I also have a rigging foam in here um, that I have a streamer rig on right now that can swap in and out with nymphs and then i have my tippet up here a um, bunch of different spools that i'm sorting through different styles and brands of tippet right now to try and see what i like but mostly i, I keep my smaller nymph and dry fly tippet that i'm going to use a lot up here and then uh, any thicker stuff that i might only dive into occasionally i keep that in back so it just doesn't clutter everything up so that kind of five through seven x is up here um, I also have some tippet rings in this box. It looks like a hook box, which it is, but there's tippet rings in there, extras. Um, more tippet, and that's pretty much it for what's in the front compartment here. Then, in the larger compartment here, that's where I keep the boxes that I expect to be fishing the most for the day. So, um, since I'm expecting mostly nymphing here, I have a box that's just Paragones. So this is a four leaf box. And actually I'm probably gonna have to uh, get a larger box here soon. I just pulled these out of a different box because they were kind of getting to be a mess and strewn everywhere because I had too many in it. So I slimmed my selection down, but now it's too slim for my own liking. And I'm tying new Paragones that I want to be able to put it there, in there and I can't. So 
But anyway, box with a pair of guns. Then I have uh, one of these fulling mill leaf boxes. And this is kind of like, other than pair of guns, is my main nymph box. So I have a, a page with pheasant tail variations, Frenchies, stuff like that. I have another page with uh, hare's ear variations, soft tackle carrots, duracells, that type of stuff. One page that's all tag nymphs, so blow torches and variations. And then another one that's kind of scuds and waltz worms that um, uh, fill up that side. So lots of different just kind of core Euro nymph patterns there um, in that box. And then on the inside, I've got a pair of hemostats, a hook sharpener. I have a dry fly towel, which you can also see has a bunch of orange on it. That's This is what I use not only to dry out dry flies, but I wipe Scafar's wax off my leader with this. And then I have Scafar's wax, a couple of colors, yellow and orange in here, also pink every once in a while. I have a measuring tape just in case. I have frog fanny or powder with a brush. I keep some Sempi nylon in here, usually 0.16 and 0.18, this is 0.16. Um, in case I break my microliter on the river, I can rebuild. Got a stomach pump. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, a lens cleaning cloth. So this one I keep just for glasses uh, and lenses on cameras, things like that. But I don't put the Scafar's wax on here because obviously that probably wouldn't work out well for my sunglasses. And lastly, before I forget, since I just about did, um, I have here in the pockets, I have both Muselin and Payette paste. They're pretty similar products. Um, I use them to to uh, grease leaders with, mainly when I'm dry fly fishing, but if you're floating a cider, this is a really important thing as well. Um, I use the Muselin normally on hotter days because it stays uh, more solid, I guess, in warmer weather. And the Payette paste gets a little too liquidy. Um, and then the pay paste I use during kind of cooler days when it's more solid as well. And the pet or the muslin gets a little too hard on those days. So, you know, if you're going to have one or the other, it's probably just fine. But since I'm persnickety, I bring both. Um, and then I have all the flotation I want. So anyway, I hope that answers your questions about what's in my pack. I've gotten asked that a lot. Um, and now I'm just going to send you a link if you ask me this in the, in the future. <laughs> but, so if you like this video, please give us that thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hit 15 or 20,000 subscribers here soon. Uh, share the channel with your friends and uh, on social media. And then also come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com and we'll help you out with whatever fly tying and fly fishing gear that you, uh, you need. So thanks for watching.